been a while since my last video because I've since moved into a new house. And here's where the DSL is connected. I've already made a hole for that. We're going to run an Ethernet cable up through there all the way back here. This is an L-shaped house. L-shaped house. So we'll want to run the Ethernet as close to that corner as possible. I'll just show you where this is going to be wired up. We're going to have three lines. Uh, we have a three wall keystone plate that we're going to install keystone jacks and run that to three different rooms in the back of the house. And we're probably going to end up fishing it near that corner somewhere. And it's really dark in here. I'd like to put one back behind here. And of course, one for my computer. So I'm getting wireless signal from the wireless router over there onto my laptop. And my laptop is acting as a wireless ad hoc <laughs> uh, network. And it is sharing with my desktop computer. It works fairly well too, which I will show you. I'm in Florida, but for a real world test, I always either go with a Houston server or Dallas server or Chicago server. We're going to go with the Chicago server. And this is my current setup, piggybacking off of the laptop to my desktop. So as you can see, about four, it ranges from four to six megabits, which is a little, I'd say it's a half, a little over a half of one megabyte. So 500 KB to 700 KB, somewhere around there. To install Ethernet, you're going to obviously need a large spool of Ethernet cable. I have a 500 foot spool of ethernet cable. Uh, you're going to need keystone jacks. And this is it's hard to see here, but that's your Cat 5E jack. You don't need to go with Cat 6. Cat 6 is for commercial deployments. You, Cat 5E is more than plenty for your home network. Then we have keystone jacks. This one happens to be a six port keystone jack, which this just gets plugged right in the back uh, after it's wired up. And you can get those in four ports, three ports, two ports, one port, you know, that kind of thing. And here's a single port. So we're going to install a three port over in the master bedroom. And then we're going to run three wires across the house. And where those wires come out in each bedroom, you're going to use a single port. Uh, you will also want a punch down tool. And this goes in the slots so that when you wire this up, this goes in and punches down the wire and at the same time it cuts the end of the wire off. This is real cheap. This is about $5. Each keystone jack you can probably find on Amazon for about a dollar to two dollars a piece. Same thing for the wall plates, but then when you're talking, well, we need three wires, so you're going to need six ports, six jacks, or six uh, keystone wall plates. You know, that stuff adds up pretty quick. Plus, you know, your 500 or let's just say 200 to 500 spool of Ethernet cable and you're probably looking at about $100 to $150 total to wire up three rooms that are more than 75 feet in length. All right, here are the supplies that you're going to need in order to run your cable. So we'll just start out with the easiest stuff, obviously. You're going to need a drill bit. And this whole kit I got from Summit Racing for about $30. Uh, another thing that you're going to need is fish tape. This is fish tape. It's just a steel or metal rod that you pull out and fish down walls and that's what the masking tape is for you attach your ethernet cable inside of here and then you mask it all together and then stuff it down the hole and that works uh, flashlight measuring tape because you're going to want to measure the cable eight foot or however tall your walls are mine happen to be eight feet so I'm going to measure off eight feet once I get to the termination point, measure off eight feet, cut it, stuff it down the wall. Uh, scissors, I find scissors to be easier because you can cut through ethernet cable with scissors and you can also use it to cut masking tape. So it's just, instead of having two tools, you just use one. Obviously a drill and extension cords and the ethernet cable is up in the attic and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, now we're in the attic and there's the box of Cat5 cable. And that's run through the wall over there to 
the wall plate that I've already installed and fished down the wall. Now we have to run that back all the way back there to let's just say bedroom B. Okay, so next step is to drill a hole in the ceiling, not the ceiling, in the wall. Not the ceiling. And then use this fish tape to put the ethernet cable down through the wall. And then we're gonna fish it out through the bottom of the wall. Ow! Nails? Yeah. I just have this little length of copper wire. Uh, it's about a foot. That way I can get back into whatever wall cavity I need and get that hook on the fish tape or the cable. And once you get that, you pull it through and you cut the tape that you taped to your fish tape, which it is not actually for fishing and it's not any kind of tape. Now the next step will be to do it again on the other side of the house. One, to Florida, summer. Hot, 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 hot. Okay, now we are below my desk and I'm thinking that I want to put the jack in between this telephone jack and the power jack. Might even want to consider putting it over here because you don't want your Cat5 cable close to a power outlet. It should be, you know, let's just say a foot away. And I've already got out my stud sensor, my stud finder, and there should be a stud going right beside this. You will usually find a stud right beside a power outlet uh, because they mount the box to the side of the stud on either side. It happens to be on the left side on this one. And the telephone jack, there's a stud on the left side of that too. And as you can see by that telephone jack, uh, this house has some issues. Uh, some builder quality issues. <laughs> that is some... That's paint. That's not stucco. That's just paint. And they painted over the telephone jack. And I can see inside that jack. And it's all jacked up inside of that thing. I'm not even sure if that thing's going to work. So we need to cut an access hole for our wall plate. So that's what we're going to do. Since it's a single jack and not a three-port jack like the others, the hole doesn't really need to be that big. One nice thing about getting spooled cable is that they usually come with this nice open uh, end where you can just unreel this and it's snagless in there so you can just continue to pull this out. And This is 500 feet and we're probably only going to use about 75 feet today. At least for this particular line, this one line is going to be about 75 feet. So I'm going to have plenty of excess to run additional lines in the future, uh, which I plan to run three lines, but today I'm just going to be doing the one. Uh, so let's take this over there. All right, we're right about where we need to be above this vent. As you can see, it's all of them. power, telephone. Actually, it looks like two telephones. Uh, so I'm going to drill a little bit to the right of that and throw it down in there. That looks good. Hopefully, hopefully there's no firewall down there. Okay, so now we stuff the cable through. I'm not going to pack everything back up just in case I need to come back up here and get the drill, but I'm at least going to go down and check and see if I can fish that through now. Okay, well, there's the jack installed. Um, didn't have to go to the firewall. I actually went on the wrong stud. I drilled over there. So I had to go back up in the attic, re-drill another hole, 
Actually, my nephew Caleb did that, but anyway, he did a great job. Did all the wiring, punched it down, clean install. Uh, okay, now that we have the jack plugged in, and that's going up to the router, and then the computer, the desktop computer is now plugged into the router, we're going to do a speed test. 100 ping exactly. And we're going up, we're going up, we're going up, up, up. Come on. Oh, I thought it was going to reach 11, but 10 is just fine and dandy with me. That's about 1.2 megabytes a second. Maybe 1.1 megabytes. And upload speed is probably going to hit about 1.4 megabits. And now that I have the wireless in here, the wireless signal throughout the house, because now we're running two wireless routers, which share the same name and the same password, so hopefully uh, your wireless device will just pick up on this, the closest best signal. So you can roam around your house and you don't need an access point, you don't need an extender or a booster kind of thing. Um, so that works out really well. That's cool. I'm back online for sure.